Hey guys, Angela here and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today I have a chain rasp for you from Underworld's Night Vault that I picked up a while ago. I chose this one just because I thought he was kind of one of the cooler looking ones and would still be relatively simple to paint in a video. And so we're going to get started with him. I'm going to do something a little bit interesting with him. Um, instead of going the classic, um, I think normally the, the night haunts are in like blues and greens and stuff like that. I'm actually going to do this guy in a pink. Um, so we're going to use Vulpus pink as well as um, contrast um, apothecary white. So on the top portion, I'm going to go ahead and do the white and then it's going to bleed into the pinkish tone and the pink is going to get darker near the tips and lighter as it gets closer to the white to do this kind of neat fade because I want to do some wet blending because that is one of my favorite techniques and the ghosts always look super cool with that. And then for his other bits, we are going to be doing the keys, the candle holder and his mask in Nasdrag yellow. And then we're going to do the chains and the chain mail in Basilicum gray. We're going to then put some Space Wolf blue on the bottom along with, you know, a little bit of skeleton hoard to do this bone. Um, and then there are some tiny roses here. I'm not 100% sure if the camera's making those out. And then there's a little vine. So I've got some warp lightning and blood angels red for that, just to give it a nice pop. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the apothecary white, uh, mostly because I want that to dry very thoroughly before I do anything else. So we're just going to get a little bit of it onto our palette here. I am using a medium shade brush from Citadel and we're going to go ahead and get started. So I will be doing some wet blending here in a bit. Um, my plan is though, is I want the head and his arms to be as white as possible. Um, just to kind of get this really distinct pop. Um, or separation between the two colors. And that was sort of my thought there. And he's kind of got this neat little cowl um, on his head that actually sort of ends. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a impression here where it sort of sits on top. So it's a separate piece of fabric. So the tips of that, I'm going to sort of wet blend and do the pale pink. Um, but the most of the pink is going to be on the lower portion. God, that's already looking really cool. All right, so I've got a little bit of the white on there. As you can see, it's not fully dried, but we're not going to go be near the top. Um, but I do want to go ahead and get a little bit of a wet blend going here. So we're just gonna put a little bit of the pink on, and then we're actually going to get a separate brush and sort of move this paint around. Cause I don't want it to be too, too heavy on the, the top portion of the cowl. So what we're going to do is we're going to wet this clean brush. It's okay. That's going into our pinkish water because we're still using the pink. Yeah. And this is a, um, this is a monster brush from uh, army painter. So it's one of my other two favorite brushes. My two brushes that I use most frequently are the medium shade. Um, and then this monster brush, because I actually think they're roughly the same size. Like I think it's just a round two. Um, if you are familiar with like how art supply companies label their brushes, um, because most of the time I don't actually know if they label them as like shade because that's not exactly a thing in normal traditional painting. Um, I mean it is, but like not in a, as a term used to describe a brush. Um, and so I think these are just round twos, which is one of your most common brush sizes and a very popular one. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. We're just kind of blending this around. And then as we need to, we'll pull a little bit more in. I just wanted to have a fresh brush so it didn't end up blending too much. And I still have a little bit of my white on my palette, which is still wet. So as I need to, I will mix that in, but I want to get the pink down as first. Oh, and um, because I didn't mention it earlier, in case you guys are wondering, um, this is just primed in a white. We uh, had a really old bottle um, or can rather of um, Skull White, which I think is what, is that what it's called now? I don't think that's what it's called now. 
Corax White, I think is now what it's called. So we just have an old version of what Corax White turned into. Oh yeah, this is looking cool. Okay, so we are back and the cloak has mostly dried. It's almost finished, um, but the parts that are still wet are okay because they're near where I'm gonna work next. So I'm pretty happy with how it's come out so far. I think the white and pink have blended very nicely. And I think the top portion of his like cloak cow head portion is coming out excellently. So let's move on with a little bit more of the pink to the bottom portion of his cape. We're gonna stick with our monster brush. Get a little bit more paint into our palettes. Let's get a little water because we do want this to be relatively thin because I'd rather be able to layer the color up to the darkness that I want rather than chapping to remove paint and redo it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, and we are done with the cloak. I'm pretty happy. Um, I have a very sort of subtle blend, which I am very much enjoying. So the next step will be cleanup. And then after that, I think I'm actually going to work on the base because I wanna make sure that uh, the chain rasp himself is completely dry before I do any of the gold um, or any additional touch up there because the pink and white are so pale that I'm gonna have to be really delicate with how I put on the gray and gold just to make sure I don't get too much bleed over. Thankfully, and this is partially why I did this, the hands I have left just in the apothecary white, that way in case I do end up getting um, a little bit of spillage when I'm painting, because he's holding things in two, both hands or whatever, if I get a little bit of spillage, it should be fine. I should be able to just you know, brush on some Corox white real quick and touch it up and then put the apothecary white back on. It's partially why I did that. But let's move on. I've got my, uh, well, actually I have Sermite white as my base. Um, it doesn't really matter. They're all whites. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and get this on there and do some cleanup. All right, as you can see, we have gone ahead and done all of our cleanup. We also, uh, I darkened the pink a little bit on just the edge portions here. But otherwise, it's pretty clean. I'm satisfied. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the base portion now because, like I said, I want to leave the yellow and everything until last um, just because I want to do as little cleanup on his actual cloak as possible and as on his hands as possible. So we're going to start with the base and I'm going to be using Space Wolf Gray, which I think I said Space Wolf Blue earlier. Not the correct color, but same idea. So this is going to just be the entire bottom portion. Like I'm gonna have the dirt be sort of this grayish blue, um, mostly just for contrast um, in regards to uh, the pink. I don't want it to blend too much, but I also don't want it to be too gray. And I want the chain mail and chain on the chain rascal himself to be what's actually gray gray. So this is the Space Wolf Blue. All right, as you can see, I have basically finished the base and I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it worked out. I know that immediately after I started that, by the way, I called the um, Space Wolf gray blue again. It's blue, guys. Just rename it blue. It's it's not a gray. It's I mean, it is a gray, but it, it leads more blue. Shh, no, 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 no. It's a blue. Just name it blue so that I can stop being wrong when I speak about it. I would really appreciate that, UW. Thank you. Um, so really, guys, all that I have left is the bits on the ghost himself to finish up. So I'm going to start on that. We're going to start with the Silum Gray for the chains here, as well as um, his sword hilt, or so the sword uh, blade, rather. The hilt is going to be in uh, Wildwood, and then the gem is going to match the flame on this candle, which I'm going to be doing in Aethermatic Blue. 
Um, that will probably take a little bit of layering to get it to do what I'm hoping I can get it to do, just because that is the one contrast paint that I find is super, super pale, um, no matter what, when you first put it onto a miniature. And then of course the gold bits, which are going to be the keys, the candle holder, and his mask are going to be in Mass Dragula. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're coming back in a little sooner, but I wanted to show you some progress because, oh my God, I'm so happy with it. So I'm on the yellow. Um, all I have left is just a little bit on this side of his head to do, and then the key, and then the candlestick. The candle itself I'm gonna do in Apothecary Y. I don't think I mentioned that. It's not super important, but that's what that's gonna be. And then it's just the hilt of his sword, which will be in, like I said, the Wildwood, and then Skeleton Horde will be the leather bits because I want them to be a little bit paler than what I would normally get with the um, snakebite leather. So that's why I'm going with the skeleton horde. Um, but yeah, it's almost finished. I am so, so happy with it. Like that silver next to the pink and white of the cloak that he's wearing is just mwah, beautiful. And I hope to show you guys this all finished up here in a little bit. So let's get back to that yellow. Welcome back. And we have two final steps left. So I basically have everything done. The last thing that I'm going to be doing is null and oiling specifically just the gray portions because I want to darken them a little bit and just give them a bit more uh, um, shadow on them because they're a little pale at the moment. I'm going to darken the fists on the miniature itself with the apothecary white just to make it stand out a little bit more that there is in fact paint on there because it occurs to me that they may look a bit unfinished, especially since we used um, Skull White for the base. So I just wanna make sure that the bluish tone that Apothecary White leaves is definitively in the grooves of his fingers to make sure that they look like they're finished. And then I had one small um, point where I got a little bit of Wildwood on this inner portion of the cloth. So I had to touch that up with a bit of my white primer and I'm just gonna go back over that very lightly with the pink. Um, but other than that, it is almost finished. We will see you in a few minutes, actually not even a few minutes, a few seconds with the final results. We have done it. Well, I have done it. I have painted him and he is beautiful. I actually am very, very happy. The pink came out great. I love the way that the base looks and the gold and the, the chain ended up being just really, really, really just a good color combination. I went ahead and known oiled the, the gray, like I said I would, um, but I also actually added a little bit of, um, what is it, Karoberg Crimson, um, the red shade that I have underneath the edges here just to give it a little bit of a shadow to differentiate the cowl from the rest of the cloak. Um, but I think it came out really great. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments and let me know what you would have done if you had painted one of the ghosts. I see a lot of people doing a lot of really cool color combinations with the ghosts, and which is one of the reasons I actually like painting them, um, other than the fact that they are relatively easy. I think I did this in like two hours total between like cuts of the, the filming and everything. Um, which for me is really, really good actually. Um, so I'm very proud. And I, anyways, I think you guys will uh, enjoy this hopefully, and we will see you next time.